what do you think about this big event tonight? Huh? So we're sitting up into the bill more.
problem vegetarian thing offends me for, for a couple of reasons. One of them, first and foremost, is I cannot imagine, given how little time we have on this planet, how little time at the table we have, how few of us in America have passports, how hard it is and how lucky I am. You know, I was a guy who stood next to that damn prior for my whole life, 44 years old, before Kitchen Confidential came out, I thought, this is it. I was pretty goddamn sure, if I was sure of anything, I would never see Saigon, I would never see Hong Kong, I would probably never see Rome. So when I arrived, you know, when things change, I suddenly find myself traveling the world, and I find myself in Thailand. Thailand, I feel pretty goddamn lucky. So I don't understand <laughs> how anyone, for any reason, could find themselves fortunate enough to go to an amazing country like Thailand, 6,000 years of incredible culinary tradition, incredible diverse uh, groups of people uh, cooking all these, all these wonderful things that took them so long to develop, years of struggle and deprivation and to get at these things, making the most of what little have all of these colors and textures and flavors. How could you show up in Thailand and not say, yes, 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 I will try everything, everything that's offered. How could you show up in a place like that and say, I'm really not interested in your long struggle. I'm really not interested in, you know, all that you might have to offer. I, 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 you know, you have a spinach salad. I just, <laughs> how can you reject that knowledge, that experience, those personal relationships that you may or may not be making? That? It's like, to me, it's like going to the Louvre in Paris and announcing beforehand, I will only be looking at paintings in the color blue and black. <laughs> I really don't need to see the others, because they can't be that good or that good. They're bringing a lot of choices, my own business. Now, what, what possible reason could you have? Well, there's the health. So many times, you know, I'm at, and, and understand Vietnam in particular is a country where, particularly when, when, when I started going there, in parts of the country, it's a big deal to see an American. Well, I'd have to walk around with a, a, a ready made excuse in my head with my cyclo driver or people I met in the street would always invite me to dinner. And I understood that they're going to, just because I'm an American, all of these people were like, oh, you're from America, come to my house. Let me show you how great our country is. Let me show you how great our food is. They have very little. They kill the one chicken the family had for a week. They bang up their family for a week. For the honor, for the privilege, but for the pride of, of showing a foreigner and an American uh, what, what they have and how much they can do. And tell me, so this is where I come from. This is, this is, this is my grandfather taught me how to make it. Uh, it's a big deal. And I understood that you, know, you, you show up at somebody's home, you know, the neighbors are coming over. You know, we're eating at Mr. Ho's house in, outside of Canton or the Mekong Delta. You know, all the kids and all the families around Mr. Ho's farm are aware of it. The Americans are coming. These big, freakish, airy, smell, smelly foreign devils are coming. You know, let's go over there and look. <laughs> In spite of the fact that I think a dog is a pet and not food, if I found myself in a situation in notional Mr. Ho's house in the, in, in the Mekong Delta, if, if I'm surprised when Mr. Ho suddenly emerges from the kitchen with a big platter of, say, grilled puppy heads, <laughs> I like to think that, that given the choice of violating my own deeply held principles and, and revulsion for the idea, the idea of eating dog, between that and offending my host, that I would have the courage to say, pass the fucking puppy heads. <laughs> <laughs> because we choose, we choose to live by the grandma rule. The grandma rule is simply this. If I go to my grandmother's house on Thanksgiving, I generally don't like her turkey. It's, it's, it's one of those nasty butterball supermarket turkeys. It's always overcooked, it's oversalted, there's that box stovetop stuffing jammed in there, it's cold in the center, you know, there's the gravy's coming out of the jar, the cranberry sauce slides intact out of the can. <laughs> I finish my plate, and I mop the sauce, and I say, thank you, Grandma, it's delicious, of course I'll have seconds. Why? Because it's Grandma's fucking house! <laughs> Yes. I was going to ask, what's the best experience you've had in Nashville?
Nashville is the best Amelia you have. I just got, I just got here. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the Pringles and the mini bar were really <laughs> <laughs> the, the many beers that I had before this were, were as I said, extraordinary. But other than that, I haven't done anything. And I've only been here once before, so I'm, I'm just being ignorant about the town. I really can't say anything really constructive or intelligent. Sorry. <laughs> you're you're um, a New York City guy. What's your favorite city to wake up in? Favorite city to wake up in? Bangkok. Asheville, Saigon. Bali, Asheville. Tokyo, New York. Now, listen, I love waking up in South. I think it's it's not just me. Everyone in my crew loved waking up in Southeast Asia. Particularly All right. uh, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia. There's something really, in Indonesia, there's something really, really, there's something really magical. Uh, waking up in San Sebastian in Spain definitely doesn't suck either. <laughs> but here, I'll come up there in a second. Yeah. I've heard you ask uh, many times uh, uh, someone how long their last meal be. Uh, but what I want to ask you is it's your last day on Earth, and I want to know what you would cook for your friends and family as a departing meal. <laughs> I'm probably not going to be fussing around. I'm going to have other priorities. If I got like one day. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to be trying to spend as little time as possible in the kitchen. Uh, but I mean, I really make a little, a little pasta. I like make spaghetti out of otarga, which I, which I really get off making. Just olive oil, a little otarga, some pepperoncino. It's super, super simple. Uh, maybe throw a coat of like a big rib steak on the grill. You know, crack open a, you know, the bottle of wine I've been saving. That's about it. Thank you. Bottle, I don't know. Anything, anything ready in the bottle. At that point, we're good. I do. You do. I do. And um, what's your favorite bar cookie? And be honest. And what right. good sauce? And, and how do you like it cooked? I like. I'm not. Nice. I'm not kissing your ass here. I'm just telling you straight up. My favorite barbecue is the Carolina barbecue. <laughs> Yes, Argentina too is awesome. 